Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss the important facts about diltiazem. Diltiazem is one of the medications classified as calcium channel blocker. It can act on both cardiac muscle as well as vascular smooth muscle. This medication can be used for the treatment of many of the cardiovascular disorders where it is going to reduce cardiac conduction as well as force of contraction. Diltiazem is a non-dihydropredine calcium channel blocker. However, it is not equivalent to verapamil which is another drug that belongs to the same category. Diltiazem can reduce cardiovascular complications but it may increase the risk of heart failure. This medication is available in different formulations that release the medication different ways. Therefore, all these formulations are not equivalent and dosing depends on the type of formulation we are going to use. So, in this video, we are going to discuss such important facts about diltiazem. First, let us see the use of this medication. Diltiazem can be used to reduce the symptoms of angina by reducing cardiac work and increasing the blood supply. It also reduces cardiac oxygen consumption which reduces the pain in the angina. The second clinical use is in the treatment of hypertension. Since diltiazem can also act on the blood vessels, it can also produce vasodilation by blocking the calcium channels. This results in the reduction of blood pressure. Therefore, it can be used for the treatment of hypertension. Diltiazem can also be used for the treatment of paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. It is a type of arrhythmia where irregular heartbeats can be observed which are repetitive and short-lasting episodes. It may result in palpitations, sweating, shortness of breath and chest pain. The term paroxysmal indicates a sudden onset of symptoms. So in such people, these symptoms may suddenly onset and even they may stop suddenly. They can last for a few minutes to a few hours or they may also recur in the day. This type of arrhythmia can be identified by abnormal QRS complexes in the ECG. Diltiazem can control these paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia where it is given by IV infusion. Diltiazem can also be used for the treatment of atrial fibrillation or flutter. Again in this condition it can be given by IV route to control abnormal cardiac contraction. Now let us see how it is given. The dose of diltiazem depends on which type of formulation is going to be used. It is available as extended release capsules or tablets. However, these formulations can release the medication for up to 12 hours or for 24 hours. Therefore, you should not confuse these formulations. The extended release capsules which are going to be taken twice daily are going to release the medication for 12 hours. They are available at strengths less than or equal to 120 milligrams. Extended release capsules or tablets that are releasing the medication for 24 hours are to be taken only once daily and they are available at higher strengths starting from 120 mg to 420 mg. Diltiazem is also available as a conventional tablet where it is available from 30 mg to 120 mg. The dose of medication depends on which type of formulation you are going to use. Generally, the starting dose may be 120 to 180 mg per day. However, the maximum dose may be either 360 mg, 480 mg or 540 mg based on the formulation you are going to use. Now, let's see how it works. Diltiazem is a non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. Dihydropyridines are one type of calcium channel blockers that selectively acting on vascular smooth muscle and they can be identified by the suffix dipin. For example, we have various drugs like nifedipine, amlodipine, felodipine, and many more. However, diltiazem is not a dihydropyridine. That's why it is classified as a non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. Another drug, verapamil, is also non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. However, verapamil is selective for cardiac muscle. Unlike verapamil, diltiazem is not only acting on the cardiac muscle, it also acts on the vascular smooth muscle. Therefore, it can show actions on both cardiac muscle as well as vascular smooth muscle. It mainly blocks L-type voltage-gated calcium channels both in the heart as well as on the blood vessels. By blocking these calcium channels, it can reduce a cardiac contraction 
which results in the decreased rate of contraction as well as decreased force of contraction. This reduces cardiac work as well as reduces cardiac oxygen consumption. Diltiasm can also produce dilation of blood vessels supplying to the heart. Because of this coronary vasodilation, it can also relieve the symptoms of angina. That's why diltiasm can improve the symptoms of angina as well as it can relieve the symptoms of cardiac arrhythmias. Similarly, diltiasm can act on the vascular smooth muscle where it can reduce the calcium entry through the L-type calcium channels. This prevents the contraction of vascular smooth muscle leading to vasodilation. Due to this, it can reduce blood pressure. That's why it can be used in the management of hypertension. Diltiasm has an onset of action of 30 to 60 minutes and it has moderate bioavailability when it is given by oral administration. Around 40% of the medication is absorbed into the systemic circulation when it is given by oral route. It is metabolized by CYP3A4 enzymes in the liver. One of its metabolites is the desestyl diltiasm which is around 50% as potent as diltiasm to produce coronary vasodilation. Now let us the precautions of this medication. Diltiasm can reduce cardiac conduction. Particularly, it can reduce conduction velocity at the AV node. Therefore, in the people with second or third degree heart block, where atrioventricular conduction is very important, this drug may further increase the block. Diltiasm can reduce the heart rate, therefore it can produce bradycardia. Therefore, in the people with increased risk of bradycardia or using the agents that are going to reduce the heart rate, use of diltiasm may further increase the risk. Diltiasm can increase the liver enzymes along with alkaline phosphatase levels. It can elevate alanine transaminase and aspartate transaminase levels. This elevation of liver enzymes may be resolved after discontinuation of the treatment. This medication can produce hypotension which is symptomatic and it is well controlled by adjusting the dose. Since diltiasm acts as a calcium channel blocker, it can produce dilation of blood vessels. This may result in the increased capillary permeability leading to accumulation of fluids. Therefore, this medication can produce peripheral edema which can be observed after 2-3 to three weeks of initiation of the therapy. In the people with left ventricular dysfunction or obstructive cardiomyopathy associated with hypertrophy, this medication should be carefully used. When diltiasm is combined with the beta blockers or cardiac glycosides like distalis, it may have negative effects on the cardiac contraction. This may result in the sinus bradycardia. Similarly, clonidine when it is combined with diltiasm may also produce sinus bradycardia. Diltiasm may not be suitable for the patients with heart failure. Since this medication blocks calcium channels, it reduces force of contraction. In the people with heart failure, the cardiac output is reduced where they need few medications that increase force of contraction. Even though diltiasm reduces cardiac work, it has negative effects on force of contraction. Therefore, in people with heart failure, it can further reduce cardiac output. This effect of diltiasm is called negative inotropic effect. Therefore, in people with heart failure, diltiasm may further increase the risk. Diltiasm is contraindicated in conditions like Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. It is one type of re-entry arrhythmia where use of diltiasm may further increase the risk. Since it acts as a calcium channel blocker, it can reduce plateau phase and when this plateau phase is reduced, the effective repolation period is going to be reduced. This may increase the re-entry type of arrhythmia leading to an increased risk of Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Now let us see the adverse effects of diltiasm. The important side effect of diltiasm is the edema. Since this medication acts as a vasodilator, it can increase the risk of edema. It can also increase the cranial vasodilation leading to headache. Other side effects like dizziness, hypotension, nausea and vomiting can also be observed. It can also produce flushing the increased redness of the skin due to vasodilation. Muscle pains and bradycardia can also be observed. Diltiasm can also reduce the GM motility, therefore it can produce constipation as another important side effect. It can also produce gingival hyperplasia, proliferation of gums can be observed. So these are the various important facts about diltiasm 
which is used to reduce the cardiovascular complications, but it may increase the risk of heart failure as well as heart block due to reduction of force of contraction and decreased atrioventricular conduction. So that's all about the different facts of diltiazem. I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the like button to support our work. Please share this video with your friends and share your comments in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.